John Hancock is proud to sponsor Kiplinger's no-nonsense look at long-term care. Hello, I'm Knight Kiplinger, editor-in-chief of Kiplinger Publications. For more than 85 years, our journalists have offered consumers and people in management useful information and guidance for decisions about the difficult challenges they face in life. As our nation ages, one of the challenges that more and more of us will face is the possible need for long-term care. The aim of this video is to help you figure out how, if that need arises, you will meet the financial challenges of long-term care. We hope it's useful to you. I'm Kevin McCormley of Kiplinger's, and I'm here with Mary Beth Franklin, the retirement editor of Kiplinger's Personal Finance Magazine, and we're talking about long-term care. Mary Beth, what is this place? A resort of some kind? No, actually, it's an active adult community for residents 55 and older. In fact, it's one of the hottest trends in retirement living. But we're here to talk about long-term care. Should we be in a nursing home? No, nope, this is the perfect place to start because when you're young and healthy and active is the time to think about long-term care and more importantly, to think about how to pay for it. Let's go inside and figure this out. Okay, Mary Beth, let's start at the beginning. Exactly what is long-term care? It's really any care you receive continuously for an extended period of time. That could be a few months or even a few years. But what kind of care? Simple things, really, as people age or if they become ill, sometimes they need help with everyday tasks like uh, getting dressed, bathing, going to the bathroom, or somebody with dementia, like Alzheimer's, might need constant supervision. Well, where do you get this care? It can be any place. It can be in your own home, in an assisted living facility, or in more severe cases in a nursing home. But we're not just talking about nursing homes. Oh, definitely not. In fact, most people would prefer to receive care at home if they could. And in fact, only about 20% of long-term care is actually delivered in nursing homes. Let me tell you about a couple, John and Kathy Dickman, both of their parents were receiving care at home. And like a lot of boomers, they're finding firsthand what it's like to deal with long-term care, all the costs and all the problems. Kathy, John, you're in your 50s. When did you start thinking about long-term care? Well, uh, about 10 years ago, my dad, uh, we found out he had Alzheimer's. And he uh, uh, was taken care of by my mom then for about three years. Did he eventually end up in a nursing home? Oh yeah, we realized that we, we had to get him into a facility. And it was after that time that we realized, you know, we should have done that much earlier, quite honestly, because uh, it had taken such a toll on my mom. And Kathy, what about you? Do you have a history with long-term care in your family? My dad had a, a spinal cord injury and became paralyzed and is in a wheelchair. He was very active, traveled, gone to the beach, and now he's, um, he needs a 24-hour care. He so this is something that just happened suddenly? Suddenly. Mm -hmm. What does that do to somebody's life savings? It's just dwindling. He worked so hard all his life. He uh, gave his life to the Navy, and, um, uh, and you just see it disappear. I'm sure he wanted to leave something to his kids and his grandchildren, leaving a legacy. That's right. That has been very important to him. He, um, his very, very important. Will he be able to do it now? Well, not at this rate. And I'm a nurse practitioner, so I, can, I see this happening regularly. Uh, people are active, they don't expect something to happen, and boom, something happens. And do you treat just the patient? Oh, it has a huge effect on everybody. Uh, the, the, the spouse, I see spouses regularly and treat them for depression. It's very hard, There's a, and, and, and the adult child. Uh, I see them struggling with the burdens of uh, f their children and their parents and trying to meet everyone's needs. The two of you must be thinking, what happens if that's us, huh? That's right. We, d we don't want to be a burden on our children or each other. Yeah, and I think it, it started with on each other because yeah. uh, we realized what toll it took on my mom, for example, and, and, and we see what it's taking on, on her stepmom. So John and Kathy are living the reality of long-term care, and it's forced them to think about what to do about it for themselves. Well, I understand why they're focused on the issue. I mean, they've got family history, they've got personal experience. She's a nurse, but what are the chances the average person needs to worry about long-term care? 
pretty significant, really. About 60% of people 65 or older will require some sort of long-term care at some point in their life. So this is an issue for the elderly? Well, yes and no, because a serious accident, a debilitating illness, it can strike at any age. And long-term care is expensive? Yes, and because it's custodial care and not medical care, it's generally not covered by health insurance or Medicare. So, what do people do when age or illness or accident means they simply can't take care of themselves? We need to look into some of the places that can take care of that. Next, Mary Beth and I continue our discussion at a continuing care facility. Mary Beth, we're here at a continuing care retirement community where you can move from independent living, where you're on your own in an apartment, to assisted living, where you get a little bit of help, to nursing home care. What's a place like this cost? Well, it depends on what part of the country you live and the level of care you receive. But, for example, assisted living, where you get help with some personal care items like uh, dressing or bathing, something like that would cost about $3,000 a month on average, but it can vary widely. Can you give me some examples from around the country? Sure. A low-cost area like North Dakota might cost about $1,700 a month for assisted living. But an expensive area like New Jersey, that could cost over $5,000 a month. Well, what about here in the Washington, D.C. area? Washington tends to be a more expensive area, so you'd be paying at least $4,000 a month for assisted living here. And nursing home care costs even more. Much more because nursing home care involves a lot more care, often 24-hour-a-day monitoring. So on average, nursing home care would cost about $75,000 a year. And I suppose that varies depending on where you live around the country, too. Right. A, a wide range of prices. For example, Shreveport, Louisiana may be about $40,000 a year. And then a high-cost area like San Francisco, nursing home care can cost over $113,000 a year. Well, Mary Beth, is most long-term care provided in either assisted living facilities or, or nursing homes? Well, that's what most people think. But frankly, nobody really knows because so many families care for their loved ones at home. But one statistic suggests that about 20% of long-term care is delivered in nursing homes. Home care is so prevalent, I think we need to look into that. Good idea. So you're telling me that people who need long-term care can be taken care of at home? Yes, in fact, that's where most people would prefer to receive care if they could. So they have somebody come into the house? Well, that's one option. Another possibility is you might receive care in the community, like at an adult daycare facility. And I suppose that long-term care at home is cheaper than in a nursing home, right? Well, it depends. If you only need care a few hours a day, a few days a week, it can be more affordable. Um, homemaker aides charge about $19 an hour, and depending where you live, it could be more or less than that. But what if you need 24-7 care at home? Well, then it can get really expensive. In fact, it could be more expensive in the nursing home because a, a medical aid is going to charge about $39 an hour and even more in some parts of the country. $39 an hour? That that's more than $900 a day. That's right. It can be very expensive to receive 24-hour day care at home, as we'll see in my conversation with Jackie Evans. Jackie, you know about long-term care. You've been living the reality of long-term care for the last 10 years or so. Tell me about it. Now, my husband has had balance issues for a long time. And one night he got up and went downstairs, but he didn't quite make it the whole way down. What happened? He fell. He, it ended up that he had broken collarbone and, and contusions and, and bruises all over. And where did he go from there? How did he... We had to call um, the ambulance and he went into the hospital. And how long was he in the hospital? It was probably a couple of weeks. He was a difficult patient. <laughs> and from there, could you take him home and take care of him after oh, there's, that? Oh, there's no way. He needed some rehab. So he went into a rehab center. And a rehab center is sort of like a nursing home, right? Very much like a nursing home. And he didn't want to stay there. Oh, that was Living Hill. He hated it. He hated all the people there, and he just wanted to go home. He couldn't understand why he couldn't. And after that, were you able to bring him home? After that, yes, we did bring him home. And did you care for him all by yourself, or did you get some help? No, there's no way I could have done that. I was working eight hours a day at that point. Mm -hmm. So I really did have to decide what to do. And what's the process like trying to find somebody to help at home? It's horrendous. We went through about five or six different caregivers and finally concluded that you basically get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. And when somebody is making $14 an hour, their heart isn't necessarily in it. Right. So what was the solution to that? Did you find somebody to come in 24-7? We contracted with a large agency who does a better screening job. Mm -hmm. And we had somebody come in 24-7, and um, she worked out very well. And what does something like that cost? 
at the time it was costing about six thousand sixty two hundred dollars a month wow six thousand a month that's seventy two thousand dollars a year that that's the price of a nursing home did you ever consider that oh he, he just never would have made it in a nursing home he hated the rehab so much that I knew that if I put him into a nursing home in a very short period of time he'd be dead so it wasn't just a matter of cost it was a matter of choice yes and we just decided that if we kept him in his own environment where he could watch his television and pet his cat he would be very happy so who pays for long-term care well, a lot of people assume that Medicare pays for it, but it, it's generally not the case. Medicare will pay for short-term rehabilitation services in a nursing home, but it doesn't pay for long-term care. Oh, so it's Medicaid that pays for nursing home bills. Well, Medicaid is the government's health care program for the poor, and it does pay about half of all nursing home costs in the country. But to qualify for Medicaid, you have to spend down your assets. And in most states, that means spending down to your last $2,000. Well, I bet that's not very hard to do considering how much long-term care costs. It is. It is easy to run through a lifetime of savings paying for long-term care. But some people do try to speed it up by giving away money so they can qualify for Medicaid sooner. Does that work? Well, in the past, it worked for some people, but it's tougher to do now because of new laws. What's going on? Governments can now look back on your finances from the previous five years, and if you've given away money at any point during that five-year period, you would be ineligible for Medicaid for a period of time. But wait a minute. Uh, I've either spent my money or given away. I have long-term care bills. The government won't help. Who pays the bills? That's the problem. Either you're going to have to go into debt or find somebody, maybe in your family, to pay those bills. So anything else about Medicaid? Well, Medicaid's not always that hoped-for solution. Because while the government might pay for your long-term care, you'll probably lose the option of where you receive the care. Well, thanks, Mary Beth, I think. Now that I know about the cost of long-term care, we've got to figure out how to pay for it. Next, paying for long-term care. Mike Kiplinger and Kim Langford go over the options. Kim, we've heard about the potential need for long-term care, and we've heard about what can be the staggering cost of long-term care. So what's a baby boomer to do? Well, a lot of it depends on your financial situation. Some wealthy people choose to self-insure and pay for any costs out of their own pocket if they do need care. Lower-income people and some middle-income people with few assets have to rely on Medicaid. So what if you're not truly rich? and you're not poor, but you might have some pretty substantial assets. Well, people who have equity in their home, for example, could take out a reverse mortgage and draw down that home equity to pay for home care. And they don't have to pay that back until the house is sold or they die. That's correct. That works for some people. There's other people who just take the chance that they might not need care, but that could be a risk because if they do need care, could end up depleting most of their nest egg. So what's the ideal financial situation for a prospective buyer of long-term care insurance? It's really someone who can afford the premiums and doesn't want to take that risk of having to possibly spend down all of their nest egg. About 8 million people have long-term care insurance right now, and that even includes some people who are wealthy enough to be able to self-insure, but instead choose to buy the policy and pay the premium so they can protect their nest egg and their legacy for their heirs. How does long-term care insurance work? Well, when you buy the policy, you start paying the premiums every month while you're healthy. Then if you do need care, the insurance kicks in after a waiting period called an elimination period. What's that typical waiting period before the first benefit starts? It tends to be about 30 to 90 days. And then what? Well, when you bought the policy, you bought a certain daily benefit, say $200 a day. That's actually a bit of a misnomer because what you really have is a pool of benefits. If you have a $200 daily benefit and a three-year benefit period, you actually have $219,000 available to pay for care. What if you don't need $200 every day? Well, if you need less than that, the extra money goes into the pool and you can use it when you do need it, even if that takes more than three years, for example. So it's not use it or lose it. It's not use it or lose it, and the care doesn't have to be continuous either. If you need care for a while, you can use the benefits, stop for a while, and then start back at, on later again if you need care in the future. Does this insurance pay only for nursing homes? No. In fact, that's one of the key things about these policies, is you choose where to receive the care, whether it's in your home or an assisted living facility or a nursing home. And some of the best policies even have care managers that help you get the help you need. Okay, we've seen how to cover the cost of care with insurance. Next, how to afford the cost of that insurance. For that, we need a little perspective.
Kim, since this is such a gigantic issue for boomers, I thought this would be the perfect spot to talk about the cost of long-term care insurance. Since long-term care costs so much, I assume long-term care insurance is very expensive too. Well, actually, the cost of the policy depends on a number of things, um, especially your health and your age when you buy the policy. If you're in good health, just like with life insurance, you'll generally get a discount. Also, if you buy the policy when you're 55 years old, you'll generally pay lower premiums than if you buy it when you're 65 years old, because you'll be paying premiums for longer before you collect on the benefits. Kim, do you have an example? Sure. Say a 55-year-old buys a policy with a $200 daily benefit, a 90-day waiting period, three-year benefit period, and 5% compound inflation protection. He'll generally pay about $2,000 a year in coverage. And if a 65-year-old buys that same policy at age 65? He's 65, he'll generally pay about $1,000 per year more in premiums. Okay, is there a sweet spot for the age to buy these policies, the right time to buy long-term care insurance? Well, most experts recommend buying a policy in your 50s or 60s. If you wait longer than that, the premiums will generally be higher, and it's more likely that you'll have a medical condition that may make it more difficult to get coverage. If you decide to buy a policy, are there any ways to hold down the premiums? Well, one way is to extend the elimination period or to lower the daily benefits. E either way, you end up um, paying for some of the cost yourself uh, out of your own pocket. And what about the benefit period? I know some policies offer two years of benefits, some offer unlimited benefits. How do you choose? Well, there are policies that provide unlimited lifetime benefits, and they tend to be very expensive, and they're often unnecessary because many times most people's claims end up lasting for about three years. And what about inflation protection? Inflation protection is one area where you don't want to skimp. This is the type of insurance where you may not need to collect on it for 20 years or more. So you need to make sure that your benefit amount is keeping up with the cost of care. Any other tips? Well, married couples can generally get a discount if they buy coverage together because they're more likely to help care for each other for a while before they submit a claim. What, what about the shared benefit that I hear about? Well, shared benefit can be a great